Hello there. Welcome to the James Arnold Taylor podcast. We are going to start by calling the James Arnold Taylor podcast's biggest fan. The biggest fan of, of James Arnold Taylor. At least she's the self-proclaimed biggest fan. Although my wife and daughter would argue with her that they are. Uh, Guinevere. Guinevere, if you have not, if you're new to the show, first off, welcome. This is going to be a little different episode, I think. But um, we're going to start by calling Guinevere because I have a question for her. Because she is the world's biggest James Arnold Taylor fan, so let's see if she answers here. So, I'll, uh, oh, up. Guinevere. Shut up. Is this Jat? Yes, Guinevere. It's Jat. How are you? Oh my gosh! I am so, so. This is so exciting. This is so exciting. I can't believe I'm getting to talk to you right now. Well, you always say that. I know, but I'm always surprised and always amazed and always happy to talk to you. Well, thank you very much, Guinevere. I appreciate it. How are you doing, my dear? Oh, say it like Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yes, how are you doing, my dear? No! Okay, okay. I thought I would call you as the self-proclaimed biggest James Arnold Taylor fan. Yes, I am. I'm, I'm self-proclaimed or you proclaim or anybody can proclaim. Because it's true. It's true. I just am. I know. Uh, here's what I wanted to ask you as a fan, as somebody... I was thinking of doing an episode where I... I just basically read letters and emails from everybody because there's so much going on. There's so many of them. And I wanted to get your feedback on that. Shut up. Shut up. That is a great idea, Jack. You should totally do that. Can I call you Jack? Is that all right if I call you Jack? Of course you can. <laughs> you can call me Jack. That's very nice. Oh, my gosh. Shut up. Okay, shut up. Yes, you should totally do an, uh, a, a special email episode of the podcast. I think that people would need that. People like that. People love that. And I know that you get all sorts of emails from all sorts of people. And it would be really uh, wonderful and special to answer some of those emails. Okay, that's what I'm going to do then. So I'm dedicating this episode, Guinevere, to you and all of the fans. Shut up. Okay, well, no, I'm not going to shut up. I'm, well, I'm going to hang up, but then I'm not going to shut up. I'm going to read letters. <laughs> oh, yep. Yeah. Shut up. That's funny. Okay. All right. I'm going to be listening. I can't wait to hear the show. It's unbelievable. Okay, Guinevere. You you be good and safe and, and have a good one. And we'll we'll talk to you on the next one. Or the next time. The next time we talk to you. Shut up. I will. Because I'm not making sense. Okay, shut up. Goodbye. <laughs> okay. Goodbye. And there she is, Guinevere, the world's biggest James Arnold Taylor fan. Self-proclaimed. Welcome to the James Arnold Taylor Podcast. Hey, Mr. Announcer Guy. Oh, yes, James. Ready to do that intro? Yeah, man, let's do it. All right. Cue that music, Jerry the Music Man. You got it, Mr. Announcer Guy. Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, it's the James Arnold Taylor Podcast. Talking to myself, the Jetcast. On today's show, Jet is going to read emails, emails, and more emails. That's right. So now, here he is, the same guy that's doing all the voices you're hearing, including this one, James Arnold Taylor! Thank you, Mr. Announcer Guy. You got it, man. I'm going to go now. Boom. He goes, the music plays, and we start another episode of the James Arnold Taylor podcast. Uh, it is... May 19th, 2020. And, uh, yeah, I'm just figuring what's the best way to tackle all of these fantastic emails. So many people, and there's so many that I won't get to, but so many that um, I want to get to. And I'm not going to read all the email, all the letters of, you know, for, I'm going to some of these I'm going to paraphrase and get to so I can answer the questions more so get to the questions quick and Bob is actually not going to join me on this reading these emails because I find it easier for me to just grab one move along grab one move along and Bob and I going back and forth <laughs> you know so hey Bob let's bring him in oh, oh yeah oh yes James in doobity dee and doobity doo Bob how are you first off Oh, I'm, I'm doing well, James. Okay, very good. Well, so I'm going to handle the reading of the emails. You have chosen the emails for me to read, though. Oh, in, in doobity dee and doobity doo, yes. I've gone through and I've picked out all the ones that people have gone to the James Arnold Taylor website, uh, jamesarnoldtaylor.com. That's right. They can go to jamesarnoldtaylor.com or they can go to jatactor.com. It's the same thing. 
Oh, I didn't know. Oh, yes, that's very good. Jat Actor. That's your handle on, on Twitter and Instagram and everything. That's right. That's my social media handle, Bob. Jat Actor. At J-A-T Actor. Because I'm James Arnold Taylor, and I'm an actor. Oh, indubitably, yes. They go there. They go to jamesarnoldtaylor.com. They click on the Jat Show link, and then they go down and fill out the appropriate information. It's important that they choose a topic. That's right. Choose a topic. If you want it read on the Jat Cast, you uh, choose the Jat Cast podcast as the topic and there you go and a lot of people write me uh they write me tons and tons of letters i mean i get hundreds if not thousands of letters every year from people and there is a lot to go through so i appreciate you bob sorting through all of them for me today just for time's sake to get as through as many as i can i'm just going to do them so we're not going back and forth Oh, and doobity dee, I totally understand, yes. I'm going to go and listen with Billy and Hank and everybody else. What's Hank doing right now? Oh, he's eating an onion sandwich. Oh. All right. Um, will you go out there and listen to the show? Thank you so much, Bob. Yeah, Bob, 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 Bob. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I'm going to go now. All right. So there you are, everybody. Welcome to James Arnold Taylor Podcast. Hey, do you have your water? You didn't think you were going to get... Come on. You didn't think for a second you were going to be able to get through a James Arnold Taylor podcast without me saying, make sure you have your water. Let's all drink some water. Hey, if you're new to this show, welcome. My name is James Arnold Taylor. I'm a voice actor. You probably know that. That's why you're listening. I'm the voice of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Johnny Test. Fred Flintstone. Ratchet from Ratchet and Clank. Titus from Final Fantasy X. The Flash. A bunch of other characters. And that's uh, probably why you then found me. And if so, thank you so much. This show's called Talking to Myself. I talk to me. All the voices are me. I have fun. But this one is a special episode where I'm just going to take your email. So let's stop wasting time. Let's get to it. Okay, some of the first ones we're going to tackle here are about voiceover. And, you know, I mean, I get a lot of varied emails, various topics from faith to voiceover to Star Wars to Ratchet and Clank and Final Fantasy and all in between. Uh, This one is from Luke in the United States, and he's asking about, well, he says, uh, I have a question for you. He he goes on, he gives me a a lovely letter here. Luke, he's 27 years old, and he's been married for a couple years, and his lifelong passion has been voice acting. And so he has a question for me. So I'm kind of truncating the letters here, folks, because I want to get to the as many as I can. He says, although my lifelong dream has been to be a professional voiceover actor, I am quite frankly intimidated by getting started on that road. I have no idea how to best get started. What would you recommend as my first baby step in diving into the world of professional voiceover acting? Well, I get asked this question all the time. And so I thought, well, we'll start with one here that I can tell you all, certainly one thing you want to do is you can go to my website. You can look at the links page and such. Um, but also in there, I link to D. Bradley Baker's website. I want to be a voice actor.com. The book Voice Over Voice Actor by Tara Platt and Yuri Lowenthal, who are friends of mine. Both of those things are things I recommend. So go to my website, look at those links, read up on all these various things. As far as a baby step, the first step is get to like your own voice. This is something I tell people all the time. Make sure you like your own voice. Make sure you're used to hearing yourself. Record yourself as often as you can. Read things out loud as much as you can. And be a fan of voiceover and all the actors involved in it. As far as getting started in it, I would say, you know, you got to record something. Maybe a a, a promo, a, a... a demo of yourself rather and put it out there somewhere you can certainly uh, start with voices123 or voices.com or one of those places and get it out there but the biggest first step is to believe that you have an ability to do this and to tell story with your voice and to like your voice and know what your voice can do so really know that is the key okay i have to be able to be confident in what i do and if i'm not confident in my own voice i can't be confident in what i do so be confident in that build up that confidence the best you can okay don't be intimidated by it know that you are blessed to be on a microphone anytime you are and just do what you do and give it to god and give it up because i know you're a fellow christian you said that in your letter just give it up and go i just want to be a voice i just want to tell stories so Lord, through your Holy Spirit, open up a door for me to be able to do what I do. That's your first step. For anybody that's a a Christian, anybody that is not a Christian, the first step is always opening yourself up to a possibility that is greater than yourself, okay? And I would say that to anybody. Know what you believe, why you believe it. Know more than you want to know. And be willing to open yourself up to possibilities that go deeper and more beyond yourself and your own capabilities. That's the only way we can grow and move and be 
who we ultimately want to be in life. So I hope that is helpful, Luke. God bless you. Sorry I didn't read the entire letter here, but I do thank you. Thank you so much for your beautiful letter, and I appreciate it so very much. Next one is also about voiceover from David in the USA. David says, I'm an aspiring voice actor in my 60s, but early in my VO career, I did work in broadcasting for five years during the mid-1980s, but returned to engineering work when I discerned that it wasn't the, what the Lord had for me. Most of the VO work I have done since leaving radio has been corporate with some commercial and theatrical support work thrown in. My current VO coach tells me that I should seriously consider audiobooks. I'm also a Christian, and one of my long-term projects is producing an audiobook of a version of the Bible translated in the late 1800s that has never been recorded entirely. So far, I have produced a number of its books in both Old and New Testaments. A friend and brother in Christ is posting them to his website as a complete them. I've always loved doing characters, but I don't have a good sense of how appropriate it is to do the scriptures that way. I don't want my performance to distract the listener from the real message, but when I read the Bible, I try to hear it in my head as it sounded to the author's own mind's ear, and many times that comes through as characters. Perhaps it depends on the target audience. I understand that there are two schools of thought on this among audiobook narrators. Would you care to share your thoughts on this? Thanks, James. Continue to pray for you and your family and work. Thank you, David. I appreciate that. So David wants to do this translation of the Bible and and put some characters in there, but is feeling maybe that's not appropriate or what have you. Look, I think that as voice actors, as people that have the ability to tell stories with voices and tones and characters. It's all a part of it. So you're not doing anything to to take away from it. You're doing it to add to it. That's the beauty of voice acting. Voice acting is to add a, a dimension, a, a layer to the story that is being told. So if, you're, if your characters help tell that story, then by all means, go for it and embrace that. Embrace that fully and enjoy that and find those characters and do that. You don't have to go overboard with it. But, you know, yes, if you're doing a audiobook. Uh, most of the time with audiobooks and such, my, my dear friend and sister in, in Christ and sister, she's like a sister to me, Catherine Tabor, you know, she reads a lot of audiobooks. She is uh, an absolute professional audiobook reader. She's wonderful at it and a master of it is what I'm trying to say. And she will take on accents and different things, but she won't necessarily just, you know, mimic people. And I find that it works very well in, in the storyline. So she might change her voice and give a little accent for somebody. And, you know, if it's a guy voice, she'll, she'll lower her tone a little. Or if it's a, if it's a girl that's, you know, being a little more, well, let me tell you, sweetie, you know, she'll, she'll take those affectations. She'll put those into the characters as she reads. And isn't that what a great storyteller does? So I think that it's fine to do that, especially with this, as long as it's not done in a way that it's overly, hey, look at the voices I'm doing. So I, I think you're probably following me, David. I, I really appreciate you listening to the show. I appreciate your question. And God bless you, my friend. I will be praying that uh, that's great. Send me a link next time you email me so I can take a listen to them. I'd love to hear some of these, okay? All right, God bless you. Here's one from Stephen in the United States. It says, hi, James, I wanted to share this with you. Over a year ago, I emailed you in regards to a voice acting question I had. You had answered my question while reading emails on season one, episode five of your podcast. The amazing thing is this. I just now heard this episode as I'm listening to your podcast in order for the first time. I was at work and heard my name and I absolutely lost it. Here's why. I've been in prayer on what God wants me to do with my voice and he used you to answer that question. See, I asked that question to you over a year ago, but it wasn't time for me to hear it, I suppose. I wanted to say thank you for your faith in Jesus Christ and for not hiding it. You are a Romans 116 Christian for sure. Well, thank you for saying that. Romans 116 says, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. I was just reading that one uh, recently, too. Uh, and I, I'm humbled by your comment there, Stephen. That's very kind of you to say. Many blessings, brother. Thank you for replying to my email on the show. The Force is strong with you. Hashtag favorite voice actor. Hashtag inspiring. Well, thank you. Hashtag you got another one of your emails read on my show. <laughs> okay. This one's from Ellen in Kentucky. Again, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but get to some of the points here. It says, hi there, James. I wanted to first say that you've had an amazing impact on my life and the community around me. Your podcast always makes me smile and pushes me to think more deeply about my goals and aspirations. The practical resources you've pointed to are absolutely amazing. Well, I thank you for that, Ellen. That's what I try to do. I, I don't 
I don't like when people just talk about positivity. They talk about this, they talk about that, and then they don't give you any tools. So I feel it's very important to give tools. My friend Matt posts a page from Jat365 to our friend group chat every day. Well, that's awesome. Please tell Matt, thank you. Okay, it says, I want to ask you two things. About three years ago, I started to struggle with emetophobia. Forgive me if I'm pronouncing that wrong, Ellen. Which is the fear of throwing up. Wow. I would have awful stomach pain and anxiety. At its peak, I couldn't eat anything in fear that it would come back up. We eventually figured out the pain I was experiencing was because of gallstones, and I had my gallbladder removed back in the summer. Even though we have a family history of gallbladder problems, I'm only 26. Oh, my dear. I have a feeling part of the reason these problems came on so early was my, my diet. My pain is gone now, but my anxiety hasn't completely been beaten yet. I know eating healthier will be better for me. Yes, it will. But I know changing your diet suddenly can cause a lot of discomfort, which I'm afraid will spike my anxiety again. Do you have any advice on ways to transition into healthy eating? Well, look, I am obviously not a doctor, dietitian, nutritionist. All I can do is talk about my own life experiences as somebody that got very sick with toxic mold poisoning uh, many years ago and had to completely re redo, hit the reset button on my entire life, my diet, my exercise, everything. I had to do this 15 years ago. And look, I will say this, 15 years later, I'm in the best shape of my life. I feel better than I ever could. And it's all from changing that after getting a real kind of, you know, nudge from God through this mold. You know, I, I could look at this mold thing where I lost my voice. If you all don't know the story of how I lost my voice to toxic mold, it's on my YouTube channel. I tell the story. There's various things. It's in my stage show. I tell the story. So check those things out. I won't get into all that now. But yes, I am not a specialist other than I have just lived my life. So again, please do not take my advice as any doctor's advice. It's a sad world, isn't it? That I have to do spend all this time with all this legal stuff here saying basically I'm just talking here telling you my own story. Nobody uh, take my advice and say, you know, James Arnold Taylor told me to do that. This is a sad world that we all live in now that we all have to cover our bases like this just to answer a very sweet letter from Ellen. So Ellen, here's what I would say. First off, do your best to spend some time every day in a little meditation saying, I love food. Food is good for me. Food helps me. Food will make me stronger. Food is my friend. Food is nourishment to my soul. Just some very positive things about food. Here's another thing that we do in the house here at the James Arnold Taylor home. We pray over our food as we make it. Now, I do most of the meals, although my wife is doing a lot of the cooking today. I cooked breakfast. She's going to cook uh, lunch, and then um, we'll probably do dinner together. But we pray over the food because anything you are... Here's the thing we all forget. We think of food as just kind of this thing we stick into our bodies, but it's like our bodies are our temples. Our bodies are all we've got, man. If we lose our body, we have nothing. So we want to take care of our bodies. So isn't it crazy that we'll spend the extra money to put ultra premium gas in our fancy sports car and then we'll go to fast food and eat processed stuff that stays in our gut longer than it should and makes us slow down and makes us you know, can cause all sorts of problems with our bodies or sugars or things like that that slow the process down. Here's the whole thing about healthy eating. Why is it healthy eating? Here's why it's healthy eating. This is why fruits, vegetables, grains, whole foods, not processed foods, are healthy. Let me just try to break it down as simple as I can. And exactly that word is appropriate. Food that is simple, organic is great, but food is, that is just whole foods, vegetables and stuff, don't take much for your body to break down. Why? Because our bodies were made to break them down, okay? Our ancestors didn't have processed foods. They had stuff that they found and they ate it and it, their body used the parts that it needed for minerals and vitamins and all of that and it got rid of the rest. Nowadays, we put stuff into our body that is made with science and all of that and isn't that wonderful in some ways? Yes, but in other ways, what happens is it's got all sorts of things in it you know, like if you think about it, again, that whole story of the Twinkie that will sit on a, the shelf life of a Twinkie is what, 30 some odd years or whatever. Well, think about that going into your body then, meaning it can sit on a shelf for 30 years and not break down, right? It won't just decay or mold or, you know, fall apart or disintegrate. So you're putting that into your body. Well, your body can't make it break down any better either. So we want to eat foods that help us get healthy, but also that break down and leave us easy enough. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you know, we're talking about some stuff there. Yes. 
So the whole point of, of eating healthy is doing it for our state of mind. Again, good positive state of mind, Ellen. But also, here's the other thing, transitioning into healthy eating. A couple meals a week then, you know? Yeah. Here's the other thing, everybody. You have time, okay? Especially now, we have nothing but time. If you say, I'm going to take a month to try to get myself up to eating three healthy meals a day. Now, that does not mean starting tomorrow eating three meals the way James Arnold Taylor eats. It means, you know, some people are cold turkey. I'm a cold turkey person. I will just go, oh, this is what I got to do? Great, and I'll just do it. But I don't have any anxieties about it. So I understand the anxieties. So here's the thing. One week, you set a goal of, this week I'm going to eat one meal that's healthy, that's simple, that I really like, or that I'm going to learn to like. You know, so in other words, I'm going to have some brown rice, uh, some steamed vegetables. I'm going to pick the vegetables. I'm going to find the ones that I like the most, broccoli or zucchini or eggplant or asparagus or, you know, cauliflower, whatever. Okay, find some good veggies and eat those with some nice carbohydrate, which is like a grain, like millet or quinoa or rice or, uh, you know, a, a steamed sweet potato something simple your body can just break down simply okay and and then a protein you know a little a little piece of meat okay we do like two ounces of red meat if we eat red meat in my house two ounces per person that's not a lot but that's enough to give your body what it needs to get the iron and the minerals and all of that okay and then the rest of my meal is veggies and 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 again a a, a bit of a carb so it's the principle is this it's 50 percent of my plate is is non-starchy vegetable 30% 30% of my plate is a good, healthy carbohydrate. Again, like a, a, a rice or a millet or a quinoa or, uh, you know, a, a steamed potato or a mashed potato. You can mash it yourself. Don't get, you know, box stuff, but whatever. And then the, the 20% of my plate is, is protein. And that can be beans. That could be meat. It could be fish. It could be chicken. It could be egg. You know, just a protein. It could be nuts and seeds. So... Start by going, this week, I'm going to at least have one simple meal that I can digest. Next week, I'm going to do two. The next week, I'm going to do three, you know, and and each week you're adding that to even one day a week, okay? One day a week. See how you feel that week, that day. So if it's on Tuesday that you make your healthy meal, see how you feel Wednesday. How did I sleep? Make notes. How did I sleep? How did I feel? Okay. Oh, I did go to sleep earlier. Oh, I, I, I did, you know, get up a little better or what have you. Having a meal that doesn't require a lot of your body's working at it. Okay. Does that make sense? All right. I'm going on and on this because obviously, you know, I'm passionate about this and I want to help people. But again, I'm not a professional. I can't, you know, all I can do is give you my own advice. Don't sweat it. Put love over your food. Pray love over your food. Okay. If you're not a Christian, pray love over your food anyways, man. I think everybody could see the goodness of of saying, I'm going to speak positivity and goodness to the stuff I'm putting into my body. Okay. It's, it may sound kind of new agey, hokey pokey, whatever. It's not. It's giving thanks. Jesus took the bread and the fish. He lifted them to heaven and he gave thanks. So that's what I do. I give thanks when I make my food. I give thanks when I eat my food. And then in The other way I'm giving thanks is I'm saying to God, and now I'm going to, in return, because you gave me this body, I'm going to take care of it by eating stuff that is healthy. And and if that's a slow transition, that's okay, Ellen. It's a slow transition. You got this. You've got this. You will get this. You will get through this. And that is for everybody else. Oh, gosh, it makes me... I'm sorry. I'm kind of tearing up here, folks. That is for all of you listening that are struggling struggling with all this stuff, but also struggling with eating and food and money and how do you afford it and how do you do it? Just baby steps, okay? Start slow and just say, I got this. James knows I got it, so I got it. I've got a buddy there I can, I can go to. It's important. It's important, everybody, to, to take baby steps to try to get healthier, okay? All of you that, that eat, you know, the processed stuff and all, it's, it's hard on your bodies. Just know that. So do, do old Jat and part of the fellowship of favor, one meal a week even that is just like a simple meal of just a little piece of fish and some some steamed veggies with just a little butter or just a little olive oil and a little sea salt. Not a bunch of spices and sauces all over it and everything. Just simple. Just do one meal a week that's simple and then go, let me try another one. Let me do another one. Let me do another one and start getting your taste. Because here's the other thing. Our taste buds and stuff aren't used to it. 
So, Ellen, your, your body won't be used to it anyways if you just start just going full bore. It's okay to take your time and to move into it and to tell yourself, it's okay, I'm doing good, okay? Okay, I hope that's helpful, Ellen. God bless you. God bless you. Let's have some water. Water is such a key to it as well. Sip water. If you're somebody that's new to water, sip water. Sip water as much as you can throughout the day. And that's the same thing with water, okay? If you're like one glass, get through one glass, one big glass of water a day even, sipping it all day into the night, that's okay. And then the next day, try a little bit more. Next day, try to get through that glass of water through the first half of the day and then refill it and try to get through a second glass the next for the back half of the day. It's all small steps. You don't have to rush it, okay? Okay, thank you, Ellen. Here's another one about health and stuff from Grant in the United States. Grant says, hey, James, love the podcast. Been here since day one. Thank you, Grant. I really appreciate that. Been dealing with stress at work recently to the point of getting tension headaches in the afternoon. It's really starting to take a toll on me because it's starting to affect my health in that my headaches get so severe it makes me dizzy. I know you're very knowledgeable about deep breathing exercises from listening to previous episodes, and I was wondering what you would suggest to help with that. Thank you for all your encouragement on the podcast. Have a great day. Okay. Pretty similar to what I was just saying there too. Make sure your diet and everything is is moving towards a healthier choice because stress and diet, these things really go hand in hand, okay? Look, I eat healthy, I live healthy, I meditate, I pray, I give everything to God. But you know what? When I get stressed out, I can get headaches. I've had a headache for the last two days uh, due to uh, sinuses because I have allergens, allergies. And you can hear my voice. My voice is scratchy today. So... Deep breathing is certainly going to help, but also just trying to positive talking to yourself. There's another question that somebody asked earlier um, or that I will get to later in, in, in this about positivity. And I want to talk about positivity for a moment here. Here's the deal. I am not somebody that just says, oh, just be positive and believe positive. There, here's what, what I'm, I'm somebody that I need to believe what I'm saying. I, things need to make sense logically. I'm not just about feelings. And I'm, I'm sad that the state of the world presently right now, and during this whole virus and stuff, we're getting a lot of people's feelings about it, which, okay, that's important. That's good. But we also need logic. So you need to have a healthy understanding of all that's going on with your body and such, Grant, and, and stress. And know that you can take control of stress. You can. By saying positive things. Now, you know, affirmations. I've talked about positive affirmations. I've talked about being mindful. These things help with stress. They just do. So it's not about just, oh, being positive. It's about understanding that science shows that if you are surrounded by positive people and positive things, you will feel more positive. And if you feel more positive, your body will reflect that and react to that. That's just a fact. I am not an optimist. I am somebody that generally can see the glass is half empty uh, on my first pass at looking things. It takes work for me to be positive. But what I do is I know, I say to myself, yes, but positivity works. And here's the other truth about negativity and positivity. Believe it or not, even in this world that we're presently in, push aside social media, push aside the media in general, push aside all of that and look at everybody's normal lives. There is a lot more positive in your life than you actually can see or know or take in unless you stop and think about it. Okay? Okay. Wake up in the morning and you're breathing. That's a positive, okay? That's an amazing task that is just naturally happening and you have no control over it. There's many of us that have, you know, many people with sicknesses and things and many people, I know there's many people that listen to this show that don't have full use of their bodies and the ability to walk or what have you or use of their arms or legs or what have you. I know that. So uh, for those of you that do, be grateful for that. That's a positive. For those of you that don't, I am always amazed. Here, you're my positive. Because the letters I get from people that say I have a disability. I think my friend Ben Povey in the, in the UK. And Ben has some disabilities that keep him from being able to do things that you and I, some of you, can just do. Just without thinking about it. Yet Ben's attitude is so positive. So I go, well, there's a lot more positive out there than there is negative. Because the human heart 
longs for positivity. So Grant, I'm a little off on a tangent here, but it's to say, look at the positives of your life. Take a moment every morning when you get up and look at those positives, okay? Make a list of them. I, I, I encourage all of us to make lists of positives in our lives. Stop and take a 10 minutes, 15 minutes, a half an hour and go, I'm going to list all of the things that are positive in my life. I mean, they could be so many things. They could be silly things. And when the stress comes, go to that list of positives. It's all okay. At the end of the day, I lay my head down on my pillow and I go to bed and I'm safe. You know, I have people that love me. There's people I know that I can think of right now that love me. That's a positive. So try to think of the positives. The negatives will always be there. But as Christ said, worrying will not add a day to your life. In fact, research shows the opposite. So therefore, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink. Okay? I mean, we have a fountain in our backyard and we watch the birds. And I think of that often. Look at the birds, how God takes care of the birds. And they don't toil over it. They just live. And if you think about it, we all kind of do too. We just, we get up, we do our lives, we do what we do. And in some regards, you know, we take that for granted, but we are just kind of living. We're, we're doing that stuff, yet we're the only beings that throw on top of that worry while we're actually still just functioning. We're going forward. We're moving. We're always moving forward, even though we don't feel like it. And that is a positive. So I'm rambling. So let's get to another letter. Grant, God bless you, my friend. I, I just want you to breathe, take it in and know it's going to be okay. I've dealt with dizziness and such as well. Um, there is a device that it's, you know, it's, I don't know, it's a few hundred bucks. It's called Muse and it is a headband you wear and you hook it up to your, you know, your uh, uh, smartphone and there's an app and it helps you meditate. I recommend that. I recommend the Encounter Meditations, encounteringpeace.org. That's uh, Drew Dickens has that and it's a beautiful Christian um meditation website but if you're not into that and you want to do meditations muse is a secular thing it's a headband i have one of them and it helps you meditate basically uh it it reads your brain waves and it starts to help retrain the brain waves a bit like neurofeedback which is something that i also uh, tell people that deal with these types of things to look into neurofeedback look for a neurofeedback place in your area. I mean, it's expensive. I will not lie. It is expensive and it could be thousands of dollars to do neurofeedback. So that may not be an answer for everybody, but the Muse headband is another thing that works. It's a several hundreds of dollars, but it's, it's something that works. Um, but then just regular meditation and that, that works as well. Breathe through it. Know that you're going to be okay. Know that these things pass. Okay. I hope that helps. Okay, this one is from Peter in the United States of America. Dear James, hello from Utah. This is my first email to you. I really don't know where to start, so I guess I could start off by saying that I'm really enjoying the JATCAST and love the Christian perspective of it. As a non-denominational Christian who is taking geology classes at a secular college while living in a Mormon state, I find your podcast to be very motivational and inspiring. You've got a, a mix of all sorts of uh, religions and perspectives there in Utah. And, and um, Utah is a beautiful, beautiful place and beautiful folks out there in Utah. With that, I have a few questions for you. One, as a Christian in Hollywood, do you face any persecution or hostility when people find out about your faith? Um, you know, I think for the most part, I... I Hopefully, I have a, a good reputation, and I think a lot of my friends that are voice actors and people in Hollywood know my faith because I'm so open about it. And I guess they kind of look at me as as um, non threatening, and which is good. That's how I want people to look at me. I I I don't ever bring my beliefs into sessions and such. And you know, it's amazing um, as a voice actor in Hollywood. I've I've been doing this for so many years and I I've heard it all I've sat in sessions with actors and actors are not a shy group they are very vocal about their beliefs and their their politics and their religion and and all of that and I have had to sit in a lot of sessions and hear a lot of really awful things said by people whom I care for deeply about their belief systems that are contrary to mine and I I just love them I just I just try to love them 
love him like Jesus would. And I just understand that we're all fighting against something. You know, everybody's either going through, getting through, or just been through something. And that goes the same for all my friends in Hollywood that have lived a very different life than me, that don't maybe have a faith or are just angry at politics and stuff. It's, you know, that's why I don't talk about politics and stuff here. You know, my my politics are my own business. So thankfully, I haven't had to deal with that really at all. But I think it's because I just, you know, I ask God to just keep me out of it. I really do. I don't want to be involved in all of the the anger. So, you know, I, I every time I turn this microphone on to do this podcast, I make a choice because there's all sorts of things that I'd love to talk to you all about that I'm not talking to you about because it's not my place. I'm an entertainer. I'm here to entertain you. I do talk about my faith here. I don't know someone could say, well, you're being contradictory to that. You're talking about your faith. Look, I'm just being open about who I am and what I am. So I try to not bring it up. I I just wish Hollywood would get back to entertaining people and start making things that aren't just about death and dying and dark storylines. I wish there was some more upbeat, fun stuff like when I was a kid. I wish there was more Star Wars, Indiana Jones, comic book type things that made us dream and and such again. I wish the comedies weren't just gross-out comedies or vulgar. I wish that was the case. It's not the case. But what I try to do as a Christian in Hollywood is just be here. And when things get offered to me that don't line up with that, I I politely decline, but I don't make a big deal about it. It's getting harder and harder to be a Christian in Hollywood, especially right now with all that's going on and how this town is on lockdown. And my heart aches for all of these folks that are out of work now in Hollywood. My heart aches for him. I am hoping that when we return, maybe we'll all be in such a need of positive stuff that Hollywood will start making that. So it's not easy. It's not easy. Second question, how and when did you first get to know Christ? Uh, When I was in my teens, I started searching. I had grown up never really having any real full, nobody ever explained it to me, but I just knew even as a little kid who Jesus was and that Jesus was God. And so I prayed to Jesus and I asked him, you know, uh, to be with me whenever I could. When I was a little kid, I would say, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I shall die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. God bless mom and Diane and Steve, those are my brother and sister, and all our family and all our friends and everybody in the whole world, Jesus, bless them all. And that was my prayer for all the time. And I don't know, you know, I, I'm grateful for that to be implanted in me somewhere along the lines. But I didn't really start searching on my own until I was in my teens. It seemed every girl I dated was a Christian. It was funny. And most of my close friends were Christians. And then when I met my wife and... She was such a solid Christian and she had a very normal life with normal parents and all of that. And they went to church and it was no big deal. And I went to church with them and she helped me see that, oh yeah, saying the name Jesus isn't weird and that Christ is actually, Christ is, is Christ. And it's, and it's good. I, I like studying things, so I enjoyed studying it all and I gave my life officially, as we say, you know, as a born-again Christian uh, when I was 22 in a church and uh, have never looked back and have every day tried to, tried to live up to it all every day. And that's what I try to do every day. I start my day on my knees and I thank God for the ability to do what I do. So uh, that's it. And your third question is, have you been to U- any of Utah's mighty five national parks? No, I have not. I've only been to Utah a couple times for uh, Fan Expo, and it's a wonderful, wonderful con, and I love it. And uh, so there you go. But thank you, Peter, for your question. Sorry I rambled on. Next one is from Jesus. It, well, uh, he says, even though my name is Jesus, you can call me Jesse, but it's spelled Jesus. Uh, and and Jesse is in the United States. I've been meaning to write you this email for a while now. I just never had time to until today. Wanted to let you know that your podcast has been helping me out recently. I unfortunately just got out of a seven-year relationship not too long ago and didn't know how to cope with it. I know it sounds cheesy, but 
Honestly, listening to your podcast really helped me deal with it. After hearing you say everything will be okay in an episode, I eventually told myself that yes, it hurts now, but everything will be okay in the end. I'm happy to say that I'm doing much better now thanks to your podcast and the help of my friends. Oh, that's wonderful. I know you probably get a lot of emails, but I just wanted to reach out to you and say thank you. I also don't mind if you read this on the podcast, as I'm sure there are others who are going through the same and just haven't had the chance to thank you. I appreciate everything you've done for me and for many others in the world. Keep up the amazing work, James. Your loyal listener, Jesse. Jesse, thank you so much. That's, that's wonderful. I'm sorry about your uh, breakup there, the seven-year relationship. That's a long time. As a long time, you know, it's it's funny as as somebody that has been married for coming up on uh, thirty years. Well, it'll be twenty nine years in, in a month from now, uh, June 29th, It'll be twenty nine years that I've been married to my wife. I've been with her for thirty two years now. We've never broken up. We always just, you know, it's so relationship questions. And I know you're not asking me a relationship question, but um, it's funny because I have friends that are single and they'll ask me questions, and I'll go. Are you really asking the right guy? Because I've been married most of my life. I'm 50. I've been married almost 30 of those years. Um, so God bless you. You're in my prayers. Um, you're in my prayers and the person that you broke up with is in my prayers and that you both find happiness uh, outside of being with each other and find new relationships. That's really my prayer for you, Jesse. And that whole everything is going to be okay. Look, that is a, that's a big factor right now. There's a lot of people that are out of work. There's a lot of people that are confused, sad, angry, disgruntled, fed up. And that is understandable. It's an unprecedented time we're living in right now. Unprecedented. And I wake up every morning and I go to bed every night thinking that. And I'm in absolute disbelief that we're in the position that we're in right now in this world. Absolute disbelief. It's unprecedented. That's all I'm going to say about it. But... We have to continue to believe, and I struggle with it myself. We have to continue to believe that everything will be okay, because it will. As I mentioned earlier, we get up, we go to bed, we, we live. There's more to life than all of that, and that's why it gets hard right now. But it's, it's about trust, too. That's the one thing. You know, I think I talked about this in the last episode. We have to... So for, for, for people that are Christians, for people that have faith outside of themselves, you have to have faith and trust in God. You know, for what it's worth, we have to trust God. We have to hold on to the trust that if he says he's got this, he's got this. That means he's got this. Growing up as somebody that never had a father, never had a father figure, and still to this day, I don't really have... Uh, like a mentor or anything. I have I have some friends that I would call them. Joe Sikora, who is the guest uh, this last week, has been a mentor to me in many ways throughout the last few years that I've known him. But I don't have like a, a go-to mentor or anything except for God, except for God's word. And I find that when I read the Bible, I do find that I get to see and say, God's got this, so it's going to be okay. So we can all always cling to that if you're a believer. And again, if you're not a believer, I really appreciate all of you hanging in and listening to the way I think. This is the way I think. I'm comforted by all of it. I'm comforted by God. I'm comforted that God's got my back. And that's how I live. I want that for everybody, but I also know that that's not reality. So, you know, I just pray for everybody. That's all I can do. That's all any of us can do. So Jesse... Keep praying, keep the faith, and know that everything is going to be okay. James, how can you say that? Well, because I've had terrible things happen in my life, as I know all of you have. And yet, we're here. Yeah, but this isn't fun right now. Yeah, but we're here. We're alive. We're able to get up. We're able to listen to the show. If we're, I've said it so many times on the show, but I mean it. If you are able to take the time out to listen to the show, then just know everything's going to be okay. In fact, right now, everything is okay. All right. I hope that makes sense. Let's be mindful of our moment right now. Right now, we're hanging out together. You're hearing me talk. Maybe you're talking back <laughs> while you're listening. And we're just 
we're having time together. We're having fellowship. And if we're having fellowship with other people, whether we're like-minded or not, because you can disagree with me here too. That's the other beautiful thing is you can disagree with me. I'm always willing to listen. Everything's okay right now. I believe in you. I know you're going to get through this. And I know that because you're here with me. You haven't lost hope so much that you're not listening to this show. That means you're still looking for hope. There's kind of this old saying in Christian talk of somebody that is nervous of losing their faith of like, oh, am I really saved? Okay, let's drink some water. And people will ask that of their pastor or something. Am I really saved? And my question to that person is, if you weren't, would you be asking this? See, in other words, the only, re the only person that really asks, am I really saved, is the one that really is worried about it. And if they're really worried about being saved, that means they are desirous of being saved. So there's no need to worry or ask it. You are. In other words, the person that isn't asking and doesn't care is never going to ask that question because they don't care. So it's the same thing. If you're here now, it's okay. You're going to get through. We're all going to get through. We have to have hope. I have hope in God. My hope is in God because God's never let me down. Humanity, I believe in humanity. And my hope is in humanity getting through this. But humanity, if you turn on the news, humanity lets you down every time. So we got to remember there is still hope out there. There is still good out there, Mr. Frodo. All right. This one's from Bella in the United States of America, is what she wrote. <laughs> Howdy. Hey, James. Hope you're doing well today. The first thing I would like to say is that I've been listening to your podcast for a long time now, and it never ceases to brighten my day or just my life in general. That's wonderful. The messages you've shared have a lasting impact on my life and have caused me to go about things in a more positive way. It's beautiful. That's what we're talking about. I've even created a friendship at my church with someone who is a big fan of yours, and we like to sit and chat about the wonderful and uplifting messages you've posted that week or the week before that. The second thing I'd like to say, or rather ask, is that I'm such a huge Obatine nerd, and I also adore the talented and lovely Anna Graves. I especially love the Obatine wedding. It's I I iconic and precious. So that was a wedding that, uh, for those of you that don't know, although I've talked about it here many times, Anna Graves, who voiced the Duchess Satine on Clone Wars, her and I got to go to Utah, where we were just talking about uh, Salt Lake, and we got to marry a couple cosplaying as Obatine, as, as Obi-Wan and Satine. I said Obatine. And we called it the Obatine Wedding. So Bella continues and says, I was wondering if it'd be possible to get her on the podcast sometime, Anna, because I'd love to hear more of you guys together. The episode in Clone Wars Conversations with her was a lot of fun to watch, and it'd be great to see or rather hear her on your channel again. Anyways, have a blessed day, my friend, and may the Force be with you always. Well, thank you, Bella. That is so sweet. Yes, Anna Graves was on my Clone Wars Conversation. She was the first episode of Clone Wars Conversations. And uh, that's wonderful. And it was great. Um, and I would love to have Anna on. I don't know. Um, I, it was on my Instagram. I think it's probably on my Insta stories on IGTV or whatever. Still, uh, last week I did an Instagram with Anna or the week before that or whatever, where we talked about Clone Wars and stuff. So you have to check that out, Bella. If you haven't seen it already, it should be on my Instagram still of about an hour I spent with Anna Graves just talking Star Wars and everything. And yeah, it was very great. So I hope you check that out. Thank you so much. I'm so glad that I can be a, a positive light to you in, in this time. Adam from Scotland says, I'm a big fan of yours, having discovered you via the Clone Wars, uh, subsequently finding out you were the voice of so many things from my childhood. So funny how many people say that to me. Uh, th well, thank you, Adam. Only recently began listening to your podcast, number 13, as of February 20th, and have found it highly entertaining and truly touching hearing you talk openly about your personal life. You've mentioned you're a runner. I am too, and I have found it to be a real positive in my life. I was wondering if you know about or have done Park Run, with its focus on how exercise and getting outside can positively impact mental health. It strikes me as something right up your street. As a caveat to this, do you have a favorite distance and are you currently training for any running events or races? Thanks for asking about that, Adam. And then also you you did a part that is, um, uh, you also gave me a personal note at the end of this that I'm not going to read on the podcast, but I just want to say thank you so much for that. V uh, very, very uh, blessed to read your your story. Uh, but yes, as far as uh, training and running and all that, I, I have... Uh, 
a Peloton treadmill. Peloton, you know, Peloton, those big fancy, those silly commercials and stuff. But Peloton makes a treadmill and I have a treadmill. And I run on that uh, as often as I can, many times a week if I can. My wife and I walk quite a bit. Uh, we try to do it as, as daily as we can. And we walk a couple miles a day. And then I try to run a mile or so on the treadmill and I have what they call bradycardia. Bradycardia is a heart condition where your heart beats very slow. So my heart beats very, very slow. And it's um, one of those things where I need to run. And so that's I started running late in life. I was not a runner ever. And I became addicted to it very quickly. And then I became so addicted to it, I was running five miles a day. And I was so aggressive at it that I actually got a fracture in my foot. And so... That was kind of a bummer, and so I had to take off some time. And in fact, somebody else had uh, emailed me recently about that as well, about their father having a, a, a damage to his foot as well for running and, and such, and how to cope with that during that time. So I'll, I'll cover that as, at some point here as well. But running, I find to be very, um, very good for me. <laughs> I enjoy it quite a bit. I wish I could do more of it. <clears throat> I have to take it kind of slow because of the past injury and such, but. So I'm not, I've never run any marathons. I've never done any of that stuff. And it's kind of sad to say that I don't know if we're going to be able to get back to any of those anytime soon. And I don't run outside because of my injury. I have to be a little safer. So the Peloton treadmill is a wonderful treadmill that has these rubber slats instead of just a belt. And so it has great spring impact. I also wear shoes called Hoka's, uh, H-O-K-A. Hoka is the brand of shoe. It's a running shoe, and it's uh, very good for folks that have had injuries. I highly recommend Hoka's. They're big old shoes, but they are wonderful for running. And so I wear those, and I run. You know, I try to keep it down to about a mile a day now just to get my heart rate up because it's good for my heart. And it keeps me going. It keeps me fresh, and I try to not push it too much right now. I wish I could run more, and I want to try to get back to it, but no, um, no training, just training for life right now. I stretch, I do weights. I have, um, I have a pretty bad shoulder injury on my left shoulder. I have some torn, uh, tendons in there that are permanently damaged. And so I have to I do some weights and such for that to try and, uh, stay in shape as much as I can, but I love running. I love exercising where I can. And so, uh, I wish I could do, I, I had not heard of park run, but I love the idea of getting outside and running. I walk outside. So like I say, my wife and I, we go and there's a, there's a track down by where we live and we walk it every day. And we, we, we walk a lot, you know, in that regard. But as far as running, I stick to the treadmill for safety's sake for me right now. But, you know, maybe someday I'll get back out there and do that. But, but our walking outdoors really gives us that time. So I appreciate the question, Adam. God bless you, my friend. And uh, I, someday I want to get to Scotland. I am Scottish. I've recently found that out, having just found out, you know, in the last eight years of my life who my real father was. And uh, that's a whole story for another time. But I, I know that I am of Scottish descent and I would love to get back there sometime. So, or get to there, actually, I should say. So thank you for that letter, Adam. God bless you. Hey, here's a fun one from Michael in the U.S. Michael says, Hey, James, I'm a wood-burning artist, and we've met several times at Star Wars weekends in celebration in Orlando. I wanted... Now, Michael, I wonder, are you the one that gave me that beautiful piece of Obi-Wan done on in wood-burning? If so, I, I have it here still. I love it. It's beautiful. It says, I wanted to share this story with you just to brighten your day. You were always wonderful to my family, including my daughter, who is now getting ready for college. So I have to find someone else who matches my maturity level. So I found my equals in my six and three-year-old nephews. <laughs> See, he's saying, because his daughter's grown up and he's stayed a child. I stopped by to hang out with them and they were all fired up about Johnny Test. Uncle Moo, come watch Johnny Test. I replied, I love Johnny Quest. No, Johnny Test. <laughs> I can't tell you how often I hear that. I told them I don't know Johnny Test, but okay. As soon as they turned on the show, I got really excited and remembered, wait, I do know Johnny Test. They said, see, 
We told you that you know Johnny Test, to which I said, no, you don't understand. I really know Johnny Test. After a lengthy explanation of how and why, they returned to watching the cartoon, not the least bit impressed. (laughs) Even though you didn't move the cool meter, I wanted you to know you are still captivating young children. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Michael. That does make my day. That's a lovely, fun one to read here in the midst of uh, some of my more... uh, serious, heartfelt ones. I love uh, that. And everybody, yes, Johnny Test is coming back. I have been in uh, sessions recording the new season of Johnny Test. Netflix has announced that, that it is coming back and it'll be a Netflix show. And it's two seasons of Johnny Test coming. And I've totally been in my home studio, totally voicing new episodes of Johnny Test, which is totally awesome. So that's exciting news. Thank you for that, Michael. That makes my day. I, I love hearing that. And I I am excited uh, to think that people are going to get to see some new episodes. Wonderful stuff. Scott Fellows is the creator of Johnny Test. He's a wonderful, wonderful childlike person as well. Scott just makes me laugh. I have to tell you, when I do these sessions, he's just, you know, we're doing them now where he's on via Skype because, you know, I'm in the home studio and He's just a wonderful, funny human being. Scott's laugh is infectious. And when I do things as Johnny, he just laughs. He's just, he just laughs and he makes me laugh. So I just love it. So I I can't wait for everybody to see more Johnny Test. People either love or hate Johnny Test, the TV show, but um, I love it. It's fun. And I've been so blessed to be a part of it for all these years, all these years, seven seasons now. Well, eight, eight seasons now we're going into. So there you go. More Johnny Test to come. Got a lovely one from Phil in jolly old England, he says. Hi, James. Hope you and your family are well. I've been listening to the JackCast for five days and I've already listened to 17 episodes of season one. Wow! I'm from Liverpool, England, which everyone knows is the birthplace of, yeah, you guessed it, Everton Football Club, as well as a group called the Beatles. (laughs) Ha ha! I see what you did there. Yes. Um, I have your book, Jack 365, and it's truly an amazing book, so far for the listeners, viewers, you need to pick up a copy. Oh, well, thank you for saying that, Phil. I followed the videos of JAT365 on YouTube as well. Thank you. I want to say thank you. I am a Christian Catholic, and although I don't go to church the last couple of days since listening to your JATCast, I've been praying for my family and friends who I know need something good to happen in their lives. My son is also autistic, who has a sensory processing disorder, and he's an amazing young boy who turns eight years old in April. Ah, happy birthday uh, to your son, Phil. I, 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 I pray that uh, he is well. He's the only boy who has three amazing big sisters who love him and help take care of him. My prayers are for them as they really are wonderful girls. That's beautiful and wonderful. Anyway, different topic. I love all the voices you do. Your Queen's English accent is great, but not everybody in jolly old England talks like Reginald. That's right. That's right, Reginald. Don't call me Reggie. Not everybody talks like you. Right, right, right. No, in fact, I I love doing, you know, a Liverpoolian, a a, a Liverpoolian accent as well. You know, everything in in Liverpool, it's like it's a question now, isn't it? So, Phil, if you're from jolly old England and you're in Liverpool, well, I wonder if everything you say sounds like a question as well, then. I think it's a great accent, don't you? All right, well... (laughs) So keep up the great work you're doing and and the love and the light to all your listeners. Take care, Phil. Or I should say, take care, Phil. All right, Phil, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Gives me a chance to do my Liverpool accent as well. I love doing it. This one's from Melissa. Dear Jane, oh, and Melissa's in Australia. How are you? I hope you're well, despite the coronavirus craziness. I recently stumbled upon your podcast thanks to Reddit. Oh, that's cool. I really enjoy your voice work ever since I first played Final Fantasy X all the way back in 2001, which was the first video game to make me cry through the entire ending. (laughs) Yeah, I get that a lot. Most of all, I was really overjoyed to find out through your podcast that you're a professing Christian. While I was listening to episode 43 and hearing you talk about your faith, I could feel the spirit stirring within me. A rare occurrence indeed, as I'm Presbyterian, not a Pentecostal. (laughs) I just wanted to keep listening. Thank you for being so upfront about your faith. It's blessing to everyone who hears it. Listening to your thoughts about brain stuff, and as someone who has suffered trauma and has had diagnosis of depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, and bulimia nervosa, I still struggle with almost 20 years after escaping an abusive relationship. Oh, I'm so sorry, Melissa. Finding God didn't fix me, but God has helped and healed me in so many ways. Whether I'm mentally doing well or not, I am reminded of Psalm 73 which says, Surely God is good to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. But as for me, my feet had almost slipped. I had nearly lost my foothold. Yet I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand. You guide me with your counsel. And afterward, you will take me into glory. 
Whom have I in heaven but you? And earth has nothing I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Mm. So true, Melissa. I love what you said there. Finding God didn't fix me, but God has helped me and healed me in so many ways. I think that that is the one thing I would say to everybody that is searching and would ask, James, why Christianity? James, why are you this or that? Well, I would quote Melissa here. It's beautiful, Melissa. Finding God didn't fix me, but it's helped. God has helped me and healed me. God is just with me now. And that is so true. And that Psalm 73, beautiful and so well put. She finishes by saying, listening to your podcast is a reminder that God is working in all things and through all people. Thank you so much for everything that you do. God bless, Melissa. God bless you, Melissa. What a beautiful, wonderful, wonderful email. Thank you so much for that. That brightens my day. How are we doing on time? See, we're getting through a lot of them this way. Zachary in the United States says, Hi, James. Recently discovered your podcast. I'm a big fan. As a fellow brother in Christ, I enjoy that you share God's love in each episode. Look, for everybody that's listening that goes, boy, he's just keeps going on and on about all the Christian letters. I'm not picking just those. It just happens to be that most of you listening to the show appear to be Christians. And in that, I think that's beautiful. That's wonderful. Um, But I also get some lovely ones from folks that are atheists. I get people that have different beliefs or just, you know, just don't have any belief. And uh, I get a lot of those. And uh, I get a lot of personal letters that aren't necessarily ones that, you know, people necessarily want me reading on the show and stuff. But um, these ones that are here that are, you know, people, sure, you can read it, what have you. So many of you are Christians, so I appreciate that. Uh, And uh, I'm, I'm, but I'm not, I just want you all to know, I'm not like picking just the Christian letters here. This just, I'm just picking the ones that Bob flagged for me. My two questions are, number one, what are some of your favorite Bible verses? And number two, how did you develop your voices for your podcast? Oh, two very different questions. Uh, Some of my favorite Bible verses of, For now we see in a mirror dimly, then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I've been fully known. That is 1 Corinthians 13, verse 12. And I love it because it says, for now we see in the mirror dimly, meaning this life is something that we don't always see everything. We don't have all the answers. We don't, we cannot see all of what our life is about. But then we will see face to face, meaning then we will see everything. When we see God, we will know. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. Meaning, we won't know everything until we go to the other side, and then we'll know. But for now, I don't know. And that's a great reminder for me. I don't know everything. So I keep searching, I keep seeking, I keep asking questions, I keep uh, talking, I keep the conversation going, and I keep trying to learn and know more than I want to know in life. Uh, that's that's one of my all-time favorites. Also, do justly, love mercy, walk humbly with your God. Um, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of his Holy Spirit. That's Romans 15, 13. Philippians 4, 13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So those are some of my favorites. I mean, there's tons and tons. Probably um, the one that's been the Most stuck with me right now is trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. It will be health to your body and strength to your bones. Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 7, I believe. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't lean on what you know. Trust in what he knows. He's bigger than you. So that's one of my favorites. So those are great. I hope those uh, answer that part. And question number two, how did you develop your voices for your podcast? It's funny, I was just talking about this uh, with my wife and daughter the other day at the dinner table. And I was talking about how I did three episodes of a, a podcast as a test run, where I just sat here and kind of figured out what the podcast was going to be about. And I've never aired those. Those will never air. Those were just for me to figure out the show. And... In those, I realized I liked talking to these characters. And then I thought, well, who would these characters be? And the characters weren't really even in those three episodes. I don't believe Hank existed yet and Mr. Announcer Guy or or Billy or any of them. It was once I decided after doing those three episodes and listening to them and I had kind of done things where I was talking to other characters and telling stories that way. And I thought, oh, I like that. And so then I thought, well, the show should have, because I I worked in radio for many years and I used to produce radio shows. And so my brain just kind of goes to, well, I would need a character that's the engineer of the show, the one that runs all the buttons and stuff. And so I'll have Hank. 
And, uh, you know, Hank, you know, I just kind of picture Hank to be this kind of guy. You know, I don't know. Well, whatever. I push the buttons, you know. I've known a lot of engineers at radio stations. <laughs> and a lot of times they're kind of that guy. And so, and I love them. I usually can just talk with them and give them a bad time. You kind of, you know, give each other a bad time in, in joking and stuff. And so, so I thought, you know, okay, yeah, I'll make them that. And I love doing this voice. This voice is a fun voice to do for me. So there's Hank. And then I thought, well, all these shows have like interns, people that help out kids that are trying to get college credits. So I'll just, you know, I'll just do a young kid, you know, just kind of a young kind of Michael J. Fox crackly kind of voice, you know, and make it a little different than my own. And so, you know, I'll, I'll call him Billy because I was kind of that kid when I was a kid in radio and stuff. And they called me Doogie back then, like Doogie Hauser and stuff, you know, uh, when I did some of these things. And then, you know, uh, the other uh, Mr. Announcer guy is just, you know, an extension of the voice I do on Fox and all that. So I just thought, well, that's just a natural. And, and then Mr. Announcer guy's brothers that all showed up in the show. That just kind of came as I went along because I thought, well, Mr. Announcer guy could be the voice that does the varied versions of things. But it'd be funnier if he had siblings that are. So if there's a, a very special, that would be George, the announcer guy's brother, you know, or or if I'm telling an old folksy tale, it would be, you know, Charlton or whatever. So they just kind of, they just kind of developed as I went along. You know, I needed somebody to read the emails. And so I thought, oh, well, Bob, it's funny. If you listen back to that first episode with Bob, I listened to him recently and uh, he was more like this. He wasn't, it wasn't Bob. So characters kind of develop as they go. Franklin was originally a character I did, my agent, Franklin and Brian, his son, they were two separate characters from two separate things that I used to do when I worked in radio. And those characters, um, were just their own thing. But Franklin, he used to be just a little bit more like, you know, just like he was just this kind of old Hollywood kind of uh, New York kind of storyteller, kind of let me tell you stories. And then he became, I don't know, he just got, you know, more excited and just bigger. And I just, you know, he just caricature of himself. And Brian, uh, yeah, whatever, you know, I'm very hazy today, so it's hard for me to do the voices, but I don't know, they just kind of form through my head. I just kind of think of them and they come up and then they make me laugh. And if they make me laugh, then I keep them. <laughs> so there you go. Thank you for that question, Zachary. God bless you. So many of you write so many wonderful letters. And I, you know, again, I, I, I'm not able to get to everybody's letters here, but just some, you know, ones that I'm seeing pop out here. It's Martin, Andrew, Ethan, Mike, Markham, Sylvester, Claire, Caleb. Faith, Kevin, John, Josh, Kara, Matthew, Joey, William, Jasper, a lot of J's, Donna, Mandy, Elliot, Russell, Josiah, Sandra, Jonah, James, oh, James, Nick, Graham, Rick, Dorian, Carter. So many, so many, uh, so many letters here, folks. Thank you all. I, I, you know, I'm going to do more episodes where I try to get to everybody's, but, uh, oh, here's a fun one. This is Elliot Allman. I'm saying Elliot's full name because, uh, he has a YouTube channel and I want y'all to check it out. It says, hi, James. I'm 13 years old and I love your podcast. I always have my water with me and take deep breaths. I love that you spread positivity in Christianity. And whenever I'm feeling frustrated, I take deep breaths in and I think about good things and God. Thank you for being such a good person. We need more people like you in our lives. Tell everyone I say hi. <laughs> P.S. I have a YouTube channel and I have a few videos up there and uh, just some funny things to brighten people's days. It's called Elliot Allman, A-L-L-M-O-N. You can check it out if you want to. So I did. I checked out Elliot's YouTube channel and I loved it. Just fun stuff. And I tweeted about it. And some of you may have saw, saw the tweet saying, hey, check out this young man. He's 13 years old. He reminds me of me when I was his age. And it's just got a fun uh, goofy energy. I mean, goofy in a good way, Elliot, that you just do some goofy, funny things and you got a, a funny sense of humor. And I liked all your stuff on your YouTube channel. I see that you've been posting a lot more and I hope all of the folks at the Jap fellowship would take a minute, go to YouTube and follow Elliot at A L L M O N Elliot Allman and follow his, subscribe to his, his YouTube channel, watch his videos and give him some thumbs up, give him some good encouragement. Just just a young man trying to, you know, make his way in life and make y'all smile. So I'm following you. I'm subscribed to your channel now, buddy. And I thank you for your emails here. And, and I'm just, and it, you had a follow-up one. I sent you an email a few days ago and I mentioned my YouTube channel. 
And I saw that you subscribed. At first, I could not believe it. And then I showed my mom and she didn't believe it either. I just wanted to thank you. Yes. Yes, mom. And yes, Elliot. That was me. And I did send people to your channel. That's why there's more people subscribing and, and checking it out and viewing your stuff. Okay, buddy? May the false be with you, my friend. Okay. That's awesome. I love making young people's days like that. And here's one. From a mom of another young person, Amberly. That's a lovely name, Amberly, from the United States. Says, James, first of all, my 16 year old son, Josiah, is a huge fan, and I just want you to know how thankful I am for your example and wisdom in his life. Our whole family enjoys the show. We often listen to it as we're hiking. Wow, that's cool. It's great fodder for conversation and spiritual discussions. Secondly, I have always wanted to be a voice actress and have been intrigued by the process. I often wondered, when you're voicing more than one character in an episode, do you record each character separately? You obviously can tr transition easily between voices on your show, but is it the same when you're recording The Clone Wars? Finally, I just want to know that I'm praying for you. I'm a comedian and speaker and know the responsibilities of the platform. Thank you for being a light in your arena and blessings to so many. Thank you for using your gifts for God's glory. And that uh, she put the scripture there, Matthew 5, 14 through 16. Thank you so much for that, Amberly. That's beautiful. Uh, love that. As far as your question goes, I, whenever I'm doing shows, cartoon shows, and we're, we're recording, like Johnny Tess, for example, I will just, we just go in order. I don't, I don't go, oh, let's take Johnny and just do Johnny and then go back and do Dark Vegan or do Mr. Mittens. I do it all in order. I read it all live. When we would do the Clone Wars and Obi-Wan and Plo Koon had conversations or O.C. Sobeck or anybody else, I would just do it live. I would just switch back and forth like I do here on the show. It's one of those talents that I happen to have that God has blessed me with. It's, I take no credit for it. It's the grace of God giving me a neat, pair of vocal cords to be able to switch. Not everybody does it that way. A lot of voice actors will go, I need to stay in this character and can I just stay in that character and we'll record all of those lines and then we'll go back and do the other. So it's really to each his own. It's whoever, whatever you're the most comfortable with and no directors or anybody, you know, goes, oh, well, you couldn't switch back and forth. It's, they understand. In fact, a lot of times they'll be like, well, let's just get all of, you know, Obi-Wan's lines and then we'll go back and I'll go, no, 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 it's fine. But that's just the way I work. And so not everybody does that, but you can, you can work either way and it's accepted either way. So thank you so much. And hello, Josiah. May the false be with you, my friend. Okay. That's for your son. Okay. And here's another one I wanted to get to before May 26th. This is for Kara or Kara, 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 K-A-R-A. -A. Would that be Kara then? Because it's a K. I don't know. Forgive me if I'm not pronouncing it properly, but, uh, you are in the USA and you say, hey, James, my husband and I recently found your podcast and have been listening to it almost every day. Oh, my goodness. I take my dog on long walks and enjoy listening to them during our walk. Well, it's another it, it, hikes and walks and stuff listening to me. I'm I'm I am very humbled by that, folks. That is so kind of you all. You're always so encouraging. I didn't realize you were a Christian until we started listening to your show. That is awesome. Both my husband and I grew up in Christian houses and continue to live for Christ. God bless you. That's wonderful. Anyways, my husband's birthday is coming up on May 26th. Okay, it is the 19th right now, so that's in seven days. I was wondering if you could give him a shout out on your podcast. Kenobi is both my husband's and my favorite Jedi by far. Well, you have wonderful taste. And I know it would blow him out of the water if you said happy birthday to him. His name is Jeremy. Thank you so much for being such a bright light in this sometimes dark world. Your sister in Christ, Kara. 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 Either one. Take, take your pick. <laughs> Okay. Well, I am a little scratchy today, so my voices are not great, but I bet you if we summon the force, we could get Obi-Wan to come in here and... Hey! Hey, Obi-Wan! Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi! You're my only hope! Hello there. Yes, James, I'm here. Obi-Wan, how are you, my friend? I'm doing well, yes. You're washing your hands and everything? Well, indeed, yes. Yes, I am. Good. Well, hey, so I've got a, I've got a question for you. I've got a favor to ask of you. Yes, James. What is it? No, no, no. It's good. So one of the listeners of the podcast having a birthday on May 26th, which is coming up. His name's Jeremy. I'm wondering, he's a big fan. Could you wish him a happy birthday? Oh, yes. Well, no, that's fine, James. Yes. I thought you were going to say something like, oh, can I use this lightsaber to open this bottle top or something? What? You know, you always want to use the lightsaber or, or teach you to use the force. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, I'll, I'll ask you that stuff later, but no. All right. Can you give me some dramatic music or something, James? Yeah. Uh, uh, Jerry the Music Man, give Obi-Wan some music. You got it, Obi. <laughs> I like that. Oh, yes. 
Hello there. Jeremy, this is Obi-Wan Kenobi. I understand the Force is very strong with you, my friend, so be mindful of it. Never go to the dark side. And make sure you enjoy your birthday with lots of fun. Remember, the light side of the Force has fun and good cookies and cake as well. So don't be persuaded by the dark side. All right, my friend. May the Force be with you. Always. Happy birthday. Oh, that's very nice of you, Obi-Wan. Thank you. That's good. Yeah, you know, people always say that to me. I go like, why do you like the dark side? And they go, they have better snacks. They have better cookies. Ha, ha, ha. Nah. The, the Jedi Temple makes a pretty good... Yoda makes a pretty good cookie, doesn't he? Actually, Master Plo Koon and Mace Windu make very good cookies. Snickerdoodle, I believe you call them. <laughs> wow. Maybe next time you can uh, bring some over. Yes, indeed. We'll see. We'll see if they make the trip. Anakin gets an appetite sometimes and eats them. But we'll see if we can bring some. Well, thank you, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Thanks for saying uh, happy birthday to Jeremy. And uh, may the Force be with you. Yes, may the Force be with you as well, James. And to all of you listening to the James Arnold Taylor podcast. Goodbye there. That's always fun, having Obi-Wan come in and say hi, huh? Well, that's nice. So there you go. Let's see. Here's a neat one from Caleb. I, I won't read the whole letter in the United States Caleb wrote, but because uh, it's, it's a long letter. It's very cool. Uh, and it's lovely, Caleb. I thank you for it. But uh, there's some neat parts in this that I'll just kind of pick out here. It says, uh, Dear James, I recently discovered your podcast and reached out on Twitter to express my appreciation for it, which you kindly replied to. However, the more I listened, the more I wanted to respond, and a tweet just didn't seem sufficient. <laughs> And you say some very nice things about me and my podcast and faith and, and listening to Coffee with Kenobi is how you discovered me and stuff. But you say, finally, this is what really prompted me to email. I wanted to share how it's blessed me to learn that you are an adoptive father. My wife and I just finalized our adoption of a boy and a girl twins with the paperwork being filed on May the 4th. How fun is that? And no, we did not name them Luke and Leia. <laughs> I love that. Although, May the 4th, right? People probably were telling you you should. Uh, God orchestrated an incredible adoption with the babies being placed with us at birth in November. I was blessed to be able to be in the room during labor, and my wife accompanied our birth mom to the OR. It's been such a blessing, and the babies have brought such joy to our lives. Oh, that's that's good to hear. It's good to hear some beautiful, wonderful news like that, Caleb. That's that's beautiful. I guess I really just wanted to share that with you because I already felt like you were a kindred spirit and learning that you two have adopted just sealed the deal for me. Yes, adoption has been a, a, an incredible blessing to my life and, and to my wife and I's lives. We, we just can't speak highly enough about it. I know this email is a little long, but I just wanted to express my gratitude for sharing your life and faith through your podcast. It's been inspiring and encouraging to me. My prayer here lately is that God would show me how to reflect his love and life during the difficult season the world is in. I believe that you are a part of the answer to that prayer, and I'm looking for ways that I can emulate you in sharing joy and faith with those in my circle and influence. Circle of influence, I should say. Any advice you have in that regard or advice as an adoptive father would be greatly appreciated. Oh, as, as a father, I would just say... Love them, love them, love them with all your heart and all your soul. Remember that when they're learning things, they're learning things for the first time. When they're seeing things and experiencing things, it's so, so often is the first time. And we as adults that have experienced things, we can get impatient with children and go, oh, I can't just see it. It's because they're, they're figuring things out for the first time. So obviously you have little babies right now. So it's, but as they get older, remember that. Also remember to take time to just watch them. Just watch be mindful, meaning live in the moment and watch as they just live because babies live in the moment. They do. So it's a beautiful time. And know that as an adoptive father, you're just as much of a father. Look, we are all adopted into God's kingdom and glory and, and family as well as, as Christians. And so adoption may not have blood in, involved, DNA, but you are just as much a father or mother to a child. As far as advice in regards to this world and everything that's going on is to just remember these things will pass. I don't know when. I don't know how. I don't know what our world will look like when they do. But it's my hope that we can get back to things uh, where we trust each other again. But um, my advice would be to Keep hope alive in you by knowing that life will continue to move forward and all of us will as well. 
I just pray for you. I pray for your, your children. I pray for your wife. I thank you for your email. It's a blessing to my soul. Thanks, Caleb. On that note, Claire in the UK says, Hello there, James. If this reaches you, then I just wanted to say there is so much truth in focusing on the positive despite hardship, which was your topic of your JATCast number 45. I lost my mom to cancer five years ago when I was 13. <sighs> so sorry. But since then, I haven't let that horrible experience overshadow my life because there is still so much joy to be found. Isn't that beautiful? Although I can no longer make any memories with my mom, I can still think back about the times I got to spend with her. Surprisingly, her death has taught me that there is always someone worse off than you and that you should be thankful for any happiness there is in your life because that is often missing in someone else's. Isn't that beautiful? I'm going to read that again. Surprisingly, her death has taught me that there is always someone worse off than you and that you should be thankful for any happiness there is in your life because that is often missing in someone else's. It's true. I connected so well with the life lesson in your podcast that happened to be the first one I listened to. My favorite moral from the Clone Wars is never give up hope no matter how dark things seem. And I think this podcast episode really embodied that. So thank you, James. May the force be with you always. Claire, I thank you. I hope you go back and listen to some of the other episodes and are encouraged by it. And I hope you got to listen to this one. I am so sorry for your loss, but I am so overjoyed by your positivity and your ability to take those things and and um, make your life stronger in it. Again, your mother, I know, or your mom, as you so affectionately call her, which I love all my friends in the UK, how you say mom instead of mom. I think it's beautiful. I love it. Mom. It's sweet and caring. Um, your mom would want you to be having that positive attitude. And that's what's beautiful, is you're fulfilling her life and passing that on so much more by doing that, by being that example. So God bless you. How beautiful, how wonderful that is. The thing I love about the Jat Fellowship, the thing I love about the Jat Cast, is we're all just folks. We're all just trying to figure it out. Again, that's why it doesn't matter what you believe when you listen here. Yes, I talk a lot about my Christian faith right now because a lot of, especially with these emails, because so many people are Christian. But um, it doesn't matter what you believe. We all need a place to go and feel safe and feel like we're not judged. And you're not judged here at the James Arnold Taylor Podcast. All right. So we're going to wrap up this episode, but I thank you all for sending your emails and such. We're going to try to get to more of them soon in another special episode. So I'll try to do an, the next episode will probably be just more of a regular episode where I'm doing stuff and I may have an interview. I, I might even be talking to Catherine Tabor or somebody else soon in the next episode. And then the one after that, I'll go back to answering more emails and stuff. So if you have emails and you have questions and comments you want read on the podcast, remember to go to jamesarnoldtaylor.com, click on the chat show link and in the choose a topic, very important, put the Jatcast podcast. Feel free to put your country, but also feel free to put where you are in the country. If you're from the USA, just put, you know, you know, USA and I'm in Tennessee or I'm in Georgia or I'm in California or wherever you're at. Okay. You can put that in there. You can also put if you want, you know, your your name to be on there or not. You can you can fill in those bits of information on there and let me know. And if there's a pronunciation on your name, feel free to phonetically put it out there so I can know and so I can pronounce it right. But thank you all so much for taking the time to write to me. And I hope that this one lifts us all up and is a good episode for you all and that you all stay safe and good and well during this time. My prayers are with everybody, all of you, no matter what you believe, no matter who you are. I thank you for taking the time to listen to my show. I thank you for taking the time to just be here with us all. Okay, we're going to get through this. We're going to get through it not the funnest time in the world. It really isn't. I miss being able to go out to restaurants and see my friends and, you know, just go over to their houses and stuff. I miss it. And it's getting old. It's getting old. But hang in there, everybody. We'll get through this. We'll get through this with stuff like this. All right. God bless you. Continue. Oh, we got to get Mr. Announcer Guy in here to do the legal mumbo jumbo. Mr. Announcer Guy. Yeah, man. Do it. You got it. Talking to Myself, the James Arnold Taylor Podcast is a production of Yumigo Inc. Recorded at Chat Studios. Engineered, written, recorded, and produced by, you guessed it, James Arnold Taylor. All voices are parody and should be construed as entertainment only. All music and sound effects used with permissions and licenses through backtracks, digital juice, production tracks, and partners in rhyme. James Arnold Taylor's Talking to Myself, the podcast. Copyright 2020. All rights reserved. Thanks, dude. 
Yeah, man. Okay. All right, everybody. Have a good one. Thanks so much. Talk to you next time. Goodbye.